good afternoon sir Hello. i am dr shrinivas kumar here i am joined by dr ferank and dr sanjay dr raghu jabir ali uh, abdullah kutti and many others sir uh, over to you sir we can see you and uh, probably present your case uh, all right so good afternoon everybody it's always a pleasure uh, presenting to this august audience uh, so good we afternoon. are in ruby hall pune and our first uh, rather today's case uh, is a uh, 53 year old gentleman non diabetic he is hypertensive and he has uh, uh, covid, uh, COVID uh, and mi both together i mean he had mi was tested for covid and was positive uh, he was in some peripheral town and uh, we suggested we wait because he had no pain and uh, ecg had settled very well so lv function is good ejection fraction is 55% minor inferior hypokinesia so uh, we will show you the right coronary angio run number 1 and we are with uh, simultaneous uh, jetkins catheter in the left ostium with me is dr makhre and dr salil and uh, the entire ruby hall team so this is a simultaneous injection together and uh, you can see the distality of the right artery next view next view so uh, you know the filling of the right coronary is uh, all the way up so looked like a focal lesion in the right coronary artery probably need would need something like a 33 length stent uh uh mukhe okay, you want to add anything here yeah this is the what we order the contralateral injection uh, as the rule suggests that first you inject the contralateral vessel so by the time you follow it here on the ipsilateral side your ipsilateral injection comes through so that you know the correct assessment of the cto segment so we we are we are with uh, ar1 and uh, next slide uh, we uh, Uh, next run we are come with a uh, gaia wire uh, this is gaia gaia 2 yeah. and uh, uh, there is no real support from behind except for a decent position of the right guide so gaia is uh, making progress on its own uh, it is guided by the left injection next Doctor, did you use microcatheter? We did not. No, no, microcatheter is there, but it is not brought in as yet. But it is in the guide catheter. Ah, okay. Okay, next. Sir, which are the situations in which you try the first uh, because of the faint antigrade trickle? Then only you will take a uh, filter XT type of wire. Otherwise, if it is definite CTO, you directly go for uh, stiffer wires. I think you thought this is a older work occlusion yeah, that's why you straight to Gaia. This is from March to today about 4 months. Okay. And uh, definitely in fact on the ECG also. Next. Okay. So the left is sort of guiding the progress of the wire. We thought we are in good position now. Uh time to bring in a balloon. Uh so you can actually see the balloon come in this is a 1.5 15 balloon uh, giant no it's abbot uh, abbot balloon mini track and uh, it, we had little difficulty in pushing it but uh, ultimately it went well so the whole length is now dilated with 1.5 only so uh, decent flow and we probably see the length also and yeah, sir uh, for sake of everybody with such a tough lesions what is your first balloon of choice uh, if it, for difficult entry purposes like here you have taken see, many tries we started with 1.5 we could if it would not cross then possibly would have taken the nick nano 0.85 Dr. Ferenc, what do you use there? Uh, what, yeah, what we use in, in in Germany in our center is usually um, Ikatsuki balloon uh, from Japan or Rurai from Teruma and Sapphire. 
for Orgos Niche. Uh, this is so our first choice. Uh, um, if nothing is running through, so usually we, we start with Ikatsuki. It's 1.06 millimeter long, and if Ikatsuki doesn't work, so then um, there is no option for crossing. That's my personal opinion. We generally take a rail balloon of thermos, sir. It's quite uh, very good. Like a good yeah. Colleagues are doing here very nice uh, um, uh, progress. Um, and uh, you can see now uh, how big this artery uh, is finally. So it makes definitely sense to, to open this artery. My first choice of why I will be probably to try field XDR and then Gaia second or something like this. But uh, Dr. Hermat is very skilled operator. He is a great so, guy. Uh, over Gaia 2, we have placed a micro catheter through which we are now putting a. Uh, uh, this is a hydrophilic wire uh, which is placed well distally. Yeah, uh, perfect. This is after some more dilatation. Run this again and freeze it. So now we have an impression there is also very distally, uh, probably, I don't know, maybe spasm, but uh, it looks like a significant distal uh, stenosis. So you have to probably use uh, two long stands. Yes, exactly. uh, I think this is what we also discussed and uh, we are now ready for two stands. Uh, we of course needed to dilate the distal part well. Yes. So we are dilating with a 2515 NC balloon on high pressure. Excellent. And uh, Dr. Hiramat, you, you do a very nice job, uh, definitely perfect. Uh, what, what is maybe important for younger colleagues, for younger interventional cardiologists, so um, how to, how to um, estimate the vessel diameter for this uh, distal um, segment? So it's 3.0, 2.75, or maybe 3.5. Um, so would you, would you suggest uh, to, do, to go here with imaging, or would you go now direct with a stand? And, and there, there is a, some kind of tortuosity. Would you, um, would, would you uh, consider to use also here guiding extension like, uh, like Godzilla or uh, whatever? So uh, we uh, were in what you are also thinking, a uh, two-stand strategy. Uh, yeah. So the distal part of the lesion is now dilated. And uh, this is a 48 length uh, Zion stand. Uh, uh, you know, the guide uh, the stand was not tracking very easily distally. Excellent. Despite guide catheter adjustment, it was quite difficult to get it further. Yeah, so what, what is now your next step? Would you uh, take another extra support wire, so body wire, or no. would you go? with uh, more intensive prodilatation or would you uh, take guiding extension, guideline or Godzilla or telescope, whatever you have? We uh, got a uh, uh, guide into guide, a telescope guide catheter. Guide catheter extension, telescope. This is a Metronic introduction uh, just a yeah, couple of weeks back. So on its own, the telescope you can see coming up to the mid portion. Yeah, perfect. Then we what I do usually, um, I usually take balloon and uh, yes. 3.5 or 3.0 and go over the balloon step by step and more and more distally and mm -hmm. to avoid huge dissections, whatever. Yeah. Actually, but, this uh, is what we did for earlier guide, guide liners, guidezilla or guideliner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but up to uh, the telescope people were telling us that it can go a long way inside without... Yeah, that's correct. That's really... Yeah. Uh, so we that's just tried that. Uh, it didn't work uh, to a great extent, but uh, once we gave a support, it moved in very easily. Yeah, perfect. So as the balloon is deflating, we are sort of uh, rolling the yeah. telescope on that. And this is the 48 length... Uh, uh, Zion's expedition. Oh, it's perfectly demonstrated, uh, Dr. Hermat, how easy PCI or stenting positioning of the stenting can be if you have perfect uh, guideliner or telescope position. So now it's easy and safe. 
Dr. Ramath, is there, uh, do you feel a, a real difference between a Guidecilla and a telescope? Well, this is our first use of uh, yeah, telescope. But I find it very promising because uh, at its own it could go up to the mid RCA where our previous stand was getting stuck. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's considered we, to be yeah, more Afterwards, possible. we needed to do the balloon anchor technique, and with the balloon anchor technique, we could pass it as and distant as we can see. A bit, definitely, it is more trackable and uh, kinking chance is less, yeah. and it uh, tracks like a regular balloon going over the wire. That way, it is a significant improvement over Guidezilla. I am not too sure when compared to Guideline and how it works, but uh, definitely with felt it is slightly better trackable and less uh, kink risk, more of uh, less like, uh, kinking is less. Uh, so it, I think uh, it has got extra support with uh, uh, a platform. Yeah. So this was uh, after the uh, distal stent was deployed. Uh, it is 348 and the uh, balloon was taken to about 14. And this is the uh, Next. position. Next. Next. This is a 3528. Uh, uh, Zion's expedition again. Again, Zion's expedition. So whenever Next. we are taking long and extra length, uh, extra long stands, uh, we Next. need to size it properly. Next. Uh, so after putting the second stand, 3528, uh, the whole length is supposed dilated with a 3 and 3.5 NC. 3 in the distal stand and 3.5 in the proximal stand. So these are some of our final pictures of the right, and this is the without wire. So you can see a lot of blush uh, at the distality. Uh, so hopefully uh, the LV, which is well preserved at this stage, continues to be good uh, in future too. Uh, any comments? I mean, this is a four-month-old uh, inferior all infarct and a totally occluded right coronary artery. And, so from uh, my perspective, very good decision to open this uh, artery, and I'm quite sure. Uh, there was option to um, for recovery uh, of uh, the uh, function, um, and I think uh, Dr. Hermat, you pointed is uh, very much um, the point how important is post to perform post dilatation with NC balloons. You know, uh, so uh, it looks sometimes after stenting by angiographic view very nice, but we know from from OCT data and from IVIS data in. In around 40% of cases, there is still malapposition. So, uh, from my perspective, um, post dilatation is Next. a must, and I do this in 100% of cases. So, in, at least in my, my all my patients with uh, stented uh, segments, they got uh, finally a post dilatation with non-compliant balloons. I think this is really very, very important point. Dr. Farhan, would you prefer doing an OCT in this case? It's too long stents, and it's uh, essential to optimize. The not tool. really, not not really. I think uh, the the stents uh, choice was perfect. Uh, post dilatation was done uh, by angiographic view. It looks perfect uh, from my point of view. In this uh, right coronary artery, I I would leave it like this. So I think when the places where imaging is not available, as the Ferenc said and uh, Doctor Hiramats are shown. Post dilatation with a quarter size bigger balloon with going to high pressure is mandatory, especially whenever the stent lengths become bigger, more than 28. Generally, it is always better to uh, again post dilate with a bigger balloon, especially in the center. Unless otherwise, sometimes you could have hourglass effect and the stents uh, less expanding at the site of lesion. So that is very well demonstrated, and the final result that's how is quite good. I think we are going to left left sir now. Yes. So we are with uh, EBU seven. And uh, you can see the circumflex uh, as it is running in the AV sulcus. It is critically narrowed in the mid and distal portion and moderately narrowed in the proximal portion. So the plan is to go for circumflex first. The uh, next vessel that you see is actually a diagonal. Uh, and uh, this is the LAD. So LAD proximal to the diagonal two is showing a moderate disease. The idea is to have an FFR on the LAD. Next view. And uh, in uh, spider view, you can see the uh, uh, diagonal showing a disease right from the ortium. 
And this right. diagonal is coursing like a poem in the distal part. Yeah. yeah. So we will be the Ramas like vessel though. But first it is clearly diagonal. arising from the LED. Yeah. So we will go for the uh, circumflex uh, first. Contrast ready. Small, small. So this is that uh, same uh, run through hyper code. Small. Yeah. I can't see it. Okay. Uh, come to this view. Srinivas, we will uh, continue with the circumflex and do the FFR. In the meanwhile, if you want to go to the other center and come back to us. Yes, Are you with us, Srinivas? Yes, yes, sir. No? Okay. So we have done that circumflex distal. We are doing a post dilatation. We will show you the images and then after that we will do the FFR for the LED. Twelve, fourteen. Matt, which wire finally did you did you use for the successful uh, crossing of? Uh, this is run through hypercourt. Oh, nice! Really very good. Boost, boost or fluorocine. Run through has become uh, most of our parts wire in most of the labs today. It looks like. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a quite. High quality oh, wire, definitely. Uh, quite good yeah. wire. I need one more. Boost huh? lagin dika. Okay, boost. Ready. So Ranka, the stress, please stress, stress. Stress. the most preferred bifurcation yeah. strategy when you so ask to go there for a bifurcation strategy in Europe. Okay, get me the micro catheter. Hello. Europe, uh, usually we okay. try to go huh? right one. In, uh, around you want to do LED first? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in Europe, and LED. I would say the FFR wire kind of will be done by a lot for trap. Uh, maybe you heard the story. So you are ready for picture of this? Eric. Contrast ready. Okay, contrast. Contrast, contrast. Um, I think, um, from my perspective, um, the best way to cover that one is so, uh, that is a perfect, but much more challenging and to have much more devices. It also play, uh, I think, important role, not only because of the costing or expense, but also according to the, to the no use of plastic. Uh, then I would uh, will zero the plastic. I think we have to do all these steps. Kiravat, sir, you are telling something, sir? Yeah, I mean, we have put a stent which is 33 length, and there is a lesion proximal uh, circumflex just after the branch, OM1 branch. Uh, so that is a discussion issue whether we should stent that or whether we should do an FFR to that proximal lesion. What is your suggestions from the audience? No, it looks like uh, mid middle takes a little extra take. If you do FFR, sometimes it could come negative also. All right. uh, where, where is the proximal stent ending? There's in the middle takes, we couldn't see that correctly. If it's very close to the lesion, generally it tends to cover. But if it's away, the lot of normal segment in between that proximal lesion versus yeah, yeah. stent, I think you can do FFR in this side. Yeah, th that is our plan. We have about 8 to 10 millimeter gap between the uh, stent and the lesion, distal, distal end of the lesion. So uh, before that, uh, we will uh, uh, do FFR on the uh, LED. Can you show us the LED pictures in epicranial? Okay, can we show them the LED pictures? Just one second. They just show the LED pictures.
So the LED in the proximal portion, proximal to the diagonal two branch, uh, that's under consideration. It looks about 50%. If FFR was not there in those early days, uh, we used to leave these lesions behind. The angle looks tight, sir, but proximal LED looks uh, not much important. Let me thank you. Yes. So Dr. Mukherjee is with the FFR wire, right? Mukherjee? Yeah, yeah. I'm with the FFR wire. Huh. So. Yeah. Okay, now equal wait, let me take the this thing out. Introduce some give some, give some in, in the fingers. Ramath, is, a, is it a little, it, it seems to be a little tough lesion to, uh, uh, for the FFR wire, isn't it? No, FFR wire is stiff, tougher. It's not that lesion is tough. The it is, is not the like a run-through wire. Is equalization done? Equalization is done. No? It's a bit difficult to manipulate yeah. FFR wire through these tortuous lesions. Yeah, what Jabir is telling is very valid point. Eh? Yeah. Okay, go to epicranial. Totally equivalent to like a routine workforce wire. So, we, are, we have done the equalization. Can you see the FFR on the screen there? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. We can see it. Yes, we okay. can see. So, we have done the equalization. Now, we are moving forward. Next, uh, small contrast. Which, uh, which, uh, which modality you prefer, intracoronary or intravenous? Intravenous, sustained three minutes hyperemia. Yeah. Are, you going, are you going to do a RFR yeah, or yeah, a yeah. IFR okay. first and then going for FFR or only FFR? Only, only FFR. FFR. Uh, actually, what we have observed is intravenous uh, actually less uh, uh, chances of getting a fallacious value. Because Correct. Intracoronary sometimes, when you are trying to change the three ways, this side, that side, and you could yeah, get yeah. a fallacious I, value. Sometimes. I agree. I Enough. trust Enough. more of the intravenous. Start only adenosine, please. Is, only thing is intravenous consumes a lot of adenosine. Hospital owners may be a little worried. Start, start, start. But intracoronary, it is a lesser uh, thing. But from patient point of view, result point of view, I think, Intravenous uh, reduction for the yeah. reproducible yeah. I think uh, we all now consider uh, intravenous continuous reduction as the uh, start yeah. gold standard. And yes. the, yeah. Yeah. the errors are much less good. Hey, just focus on the. Uh, Dr. Hiramat, sir, we also see Dr. Gary Mates and Kirti Punamia joining for the next session. And anything, uh, Dr. Gary, sir, any comments on this? Welcome to GCT India. Thanks for joining. We will just finish these live cases and go to your session, sir. Just another five minutes more. Sure, thank you. So, we are seeing uh, figures like 0 0.78, 0 0.79 on the LED. And adenosine has just started, about uh, one third has gone. Oh, then it becomes important, sir. Generally, right. when, sir, it uh, immediately in the first half itself, it has gone less. Is more likely to, but once it goes to a lower level, generally it stays there. 0.79.8. So, what is the advice from the uh, floor? Do it or wait? If uh, values are definitely positive, like less than 0.75. There is no ambiguity, but if values come in between 0 0.75 to 8 and uh, keeping the clinical scenario and angiographic appearance, lot of things, we need to take a decision. Angiographically, it was looking less, and uh, but only the issue is here is a proximal LED, important thing we have to be Hello, sure. Is he having angina, sir? No, no. LED region, which Any pain? An impact on... Um, prognosis uh, for this patient. So, um, if we have here such result, we have to, to, to handle it. No, if FFR comes 0.81, what do you do, Farag? Yeah, we are actually 0 0.79, 0 0.80, as you can see. Yes. yes. So, this it is, is really a very borderline... Uh, I mean, if I, if I can make one comment... So... Yeah, Gary, go ahead. Sure. You know, it's very difficult to normalize an FFR after you've treated an LAD. So you've got three potential reasons for the FFR being borderline. Proximal disease, distal disease, and the stent itself. Um, and if you look at the, the entire literature, having an FFR like this after stenting is much more common in the LAD 
and in the circumflex of the right. Um, so you really should also do a careful pullback, making sure that this is localized to the proximal vessel before you jump when treating the, the proximal vessel, and that it's not, perhaps that the stent is not fully expanded. Dr. Gary, they didn't do stent to LAD, they did stent to RCA and LCA. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, I'm sorry. Studying, yeah, they're studying the LAD lesion first. Oh, so uh, I, I came in late. I thought they said yeah, yeah. that. The, yeah, that's right. So, so, you know, in this case, it's a borderline um, FFR in the LAD. Um, and when you have somebody with an FFR in the, you know, in the 0.8 range, they tend to do well irrespective of um, whether you treat them medically or with vascularization. Take out the FFR wire to the circumference. Huh? We should take this to the circumflex to assess the proximal but circumflex. You, you, but they should also do a careful Spider, pullback and Spider. make sure there is some occult Spider. disease Spider. in the left Spider. bank. Sir, sir, uh, Michael, sir what Spider. is advising you to take a pullback and see that hey, wait, wait, wait. Okay. They want you to take a pullback. Okay, we live on the this thing. Yeah, so we will see exactly where the pressure is, uh, drop is happening, where it is becoming normal. Okay, I'll, okay, you know. Okay, I'll, because the, you know. That's fine, we are much distant to the lesion, you can come back start now. Withdrawing. You can keep okay. the FFR on, okay, please, on one small screen, FFR on small screen, and then okay. hand you on a big screen. So, so the so FFR. FFR on the screen, please. Yeah, okay. We are seeing, sir, now. Go ahead. So, so it was all the time more than 0.9. So, that's what is the problem, right? It's not a... Step, they got stepped up only proximate to the lesion. That is, uh, I think overall the addition would be to leave it, sir? Leave it, leave it. Uh, we, we, okay. But what is the wisdom from your end? It's only 0.9 and angiographically also it was uh, only an intermediate yes. lesion. Uh, yes. I think once we do FFR, we shouldn't fall back on angiography because angiography is showing a sort of moderate stenosis. And the FR is 0.9, we can comfortably leave it. No, we showed you but FFR which was 0 0.79, 0 0.80. Uh, point, oh, it, it is 0 0.79. Yes, 0 0.79 and point, uh, 0 0.80. So it's exact borderline, then a tough call to take. <laughs> I, uh, 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 now we are seeing the assessing the proximal LCX, sir. Yeah. Yes. Just show the uh, last show last, last picture of the LCX. Yeah, we saw that, sir. We can see the FFR. Now. Last picture. Okay. Uh, last picture of here on the cine main cine. Last picture after stain to circumflex, the uh, circumflex. circumflex. Okay, freeze, freeze. So uh, uh, you have a stain in the mid circumflex. And now we are checking the FFR on the proximal lesion. Okay, now we'll be doing the FFR for the circumflex. Check your. And what's your decision on the LAD? Are you going to stent the LAD or leave it? Leave it. Leave it. You leave all it. told us leave it, so we are going to leave it. Uh, okay. <laughs> start adenosine. We'll leave the we'll leave the arena after the live. Yeah. Yeah. I think don't forget this patient got during this procedure. Um, you open uh, the 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 right coronary artery, so it's now open vessel. You open nicely this little cirque, so um, we definitely oh. improve um, perfusion in this patient dramatically. To proximal lesion, I can order the patients order the patients in few months back. Oh. Generally, sir, uh, if you, before adenosine, if it uh, just above 0 0.95, 0 0.98 like this, even if you go adenosine, it could become like 0 0.9 or 0 0.85 maximum. It will generally come negative. But by and large, baseline, if it already drifts to 0 0.9, 0 0.85 like that before adenosine, then after giving adenosine, it will become important. Here, it looks like baseline is uh, just 0 0.9. Now, after adenosine, it could go down to 0 0.85 things like that. You started? Adenosine yes, yes. now? Yeah. Yes. About 30 seconds now, the adenosine is going on. Generally, after IV, we start getting response after one and a half minute uh, of uh, infusion or so. And it goes down to some level and then it sticks around there, even yeah. if further infusion also. 
So what do you get the good steady state rather than you know those jerky movements? Yes, yes, yes. That's the advantage. That of adds to the confidence of what you are doing. So actually, yeah. we are giving adenosine through uh, femoral vein. So it's a okay. central uh, line, not in the peripheral vein. So you would probably see the effect almost immediately. Okay. The lowest we saw till now is 0.85. You get the uh, wire run through hypercourt. We'll start doing the diagonal. What? Cutting. Uh, 275. So we are given about two thirds of adenosine. And. Uh, hey, Brady. Yeah, Brady cut it. Yeah. Stop. Stop adenosine. No, no. Let it continue. How much is gone? I think even this came 0.83. Yeah. So we leave it, right? What do you suggest? Sir. Yes, sir, because if you are follow FFR, probably we leave it. <laughs> That's a nice answer, huh? If you follow <laughs> FFR. <laughs> So, the idea of doing is it to uh, to follow it, no sir. If you have tell them, there. if you are believing it, then probably no. You leave so, it. but then you cannot say if you follow FFR. Uh, no, no, you, you should leave it there. Uh, when you do FFR, it means you are going to follow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I say I correct it. If you are like, FFR but, came more point more than point eight, you should leave it. So I'm removing the FFR wire. So FFR. You can see the drift, sir. For the sake of everybody, what uh, Gary was mentioning while we drawing at that particular point Wait, where the lesion is. To come back, the transducer comes proximal to it, suddenly it jumps up. Okay. I think now it so is now gone it up. Is 0 0.94. So, uh, that means what we have done is reasonably correct and uh, that again proves us that what we did is right. Thanks, sir, for excellent demonstration of a triple vessel disease. And with LAD not being there, many of the times uh, there is no point sending these patients for surgery. Many of the times in periphery, it is written as triple vessel just and people keep sending for surgery. Because, because the LAD is not important the and the RCA and LCX. You effectively shown that we could reverse place by PCI. If any final words, sir, Dr. Hiramath, before we break, no, sir? No, no, we, uh, uh, we need to check, look at the diagonal. Diagonal is quite important spider, vessel. Spider. And, uh, diagonal will be positive, sir. Angiography wise, it's tight, no? It's tight. So we are going for diagonal now. Hmm? I think because, uh, we'll have to leave you guys. Yes, sir. Is it yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. Thank if it you. comes positive, if it comes positive, you would stand diagonal, otherwise you leave it. That's the plan. Thank you for effectively showing a multivessel PCI very well demonstrated. Initially it was RCS CTO, and then you showed effectively how to tackle LCX and now also FFR based decision of leaving LED. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any final words before we break from you, sir? Thank you for the opportunity. That's a, it's a big pleasure talking to somebody like you and and the audience there. Uh, so this was uh, multi-vessel and uh, the right had already given him an infarct. Uh, the two vessels, the LAD and the proximal circumflex, uh, we said no to dilatation based on the FFR. And now we are going for the uh, 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 diagonal. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Namaste, I am uh, Dr. A. Srinivas Kumar, uh, Senior Consultant Cardiologist, Director of Cardiology and Clinical Research, Apollo Hospitals, um, Hyderabad. Uh, this uh, video brings to you the best wishes from Fax Foundation, TCT India, South Asia 2021. In our live case learning series, uh, we are planning to discuss uh, on the interesting case of multivessel PCI uh, demonstration, which was done from Ruby Hall Clinic by Dr. M. S. Hiramat sir and uh, Dr. C. N. Makale. What we've learned in this case uh, was a uh, patient had uh, initially COVID infection and then a few months back he also suffered with inferior wall MI. As patient was stable, uh, Sarah advised them to keep on medical therapy for some time. 
and then once the COVID got controlled, then he came uh, for the further evaluation and management. This is what is the strategy which was generally followed for inferior MIs and smaller MIs in uh, COVID era. But unlike that, if a patient has a large MI, anterior MI, hemodynamic instability, where the primary PCA was required immediately, uh, we follow level two COVID precautions, uh, PPE kits and other things, and uh, do the procedures if required, uh, taking all precautions to uh, have a negative uh, airway uh, management in the, uh, in the cath lab and also protect all our cath lab staffs and to keep the procedures uh, to as minimum as possible, time as possible, and also have, uh, uh, if at all patient is breathless, probably needs to be done, intubation needs to be done before rather than the cath lab. These are some of the points which I thought could be stressed in this uh, COVID times uh, where we are dealing with uh, such acute MI patients with uh, in PCA procedures. Coming on to today's case again, uh, initially the RCA was a reasonably large vessel. Uh, which was occluded in the mid-segment. Uh, we started off uh, with the Amplard catheter and then uh, the, the operator like Dr. Hiramath who's quite experienced straight away started with a Gaia type of wire because it's three months plus old uh, occlusion. Uh, but uh, he took the help of micro catheter which was initially kept uh, in the guide catheter. And then uh, once the Gaia made little progress, then the micro catheter was advanced and immediately the wire was changed to regular workhorse wire like a run-through wire and then uh, serial balloon dilatation the smaller balloon and then the bigger balloon were done and then uh, because the lesions uh, all they also look distally also they look like lesion from apart from the mid segment a long stent of uh, 48 mm was selected and then, then there was difficulty in tracking the stent in spite of uh, manipulating the guide catheter again uh, the telescope which is a new guide extension catheter launched by Medtronic was used and that catheter could easily go up to the mid RCA where the lesion was little was holding and then the stent could be delivered easily and uh, that's how we have also seen how the telescope catheter works in this case and later on after the stents were deployed uh, the highlight of the, the other important aspect which needs to be stressed is not only the focal points of under dilatation in such large stents it is usually advisable to take little bigger sized uh, NC balloons and uh, dilate throughout leaving the edges so that is to avoid the hourglass appearances uh, developing in the stent and then probably uh, proper approximation and expansion of the stents could happen. This aspect was also very well highlighted by Dr. Uh, Mircello Ferenc uh, who was moderating on this side who said in all his cases of long stents he would do post dilatation in 100% of cases. That's how the final result uh, was optimum and the flow was very well established. Uh, Sir has also has demonstrated initially to have a take a contralateral injection from the left side with the five French uh, catheter that helped to delineate the extent of the retrograde filling of RCA along with the anti-grade injections though that was not required once the anti-grade uh, balloon dilatations were done but initially it helps us to understand the extent of a block and uh, how the distal vessel uh, architecture and distal vessel anatomy disease is there. So that is important. Another important learning point how to use uh, the contralateral injection was also effectively shown. After the RCA PCA was done, then uh, we came on to the left side. The left side uh, has a uh, LCX as a mid and distal disease and the proximal milder disease. LAD showed a proximal mild to moderate type of disease and the diagonal, which is again bigger, had a tight stenosis. Then initially the left circumflex was tackled, uh, mid and uh, distal portions were dilated and uh, stented. And then the proximal portion uh, from the stented segment, there was about 10 mm gap. And the discussion was whether to uh, stent that proximal vessel or to leave it. The decision was to do FFR and then assess uh, the LCX proximally. The FFR came negative, so proximal LCX lesion was left. But it, anyway, an angiography also was looking mild, so it was left alone for medical management of the proximal vessel. Then LAD was also assessed. Then uh, LAD, yeah, RFR values, uh, FFR values were seen, and then uh, LAD results were baseline versus uh, post adenosine did not come important. That's why the decision was taken uh, to leave LAD also on follow-up. Discussion also raised a point where intracoronary versus uh, intravenous adenosine infusions and finally all concluded saying that probably intravenous infusion gives a uh, more uh, uh, smoother, uh, expand, smoother uh, dilatations and uh, um, rather than uh, if you do intracoronary probably 
uh, while moving the three-way catheters opening closing there could be artifactually factual errors coming rather than uh, smooth hyperemia which comes through intravenous uh, but only disadvantage of intravenous will probably more of adenosine is con uh, uh, consumed while during the testing and Dr. Hiramats have mentioned in the lab that they were giving a uh, uh, adenosine infusion to femoral vein so it reaches faster so the immediate effects are almost seen immediately and uh, that's how the uh, physiological assessment of uh, LAD uh, showed that uh, LAD lesion is not important and the proximal L6 also could be left by the mid and distal L6 was tackled effectively by stents and then uh, it was also assessed uh, how the uh, mid and distal L6 uh, stents were seen uh, in this uh, OCT guidance and then optimal expansion was sought. Then uh, in the diagonal, again, I uh, had a tight stenosis, which in fact uh, would be stented uh, at the end of the procedure. So thus, uh, if uh, another important aspect of decision making, which was stressed in this case, was if a patient has, uh, though semantically it could be triple vessel disease, but if the patient does not have a significant LAD disease or the borderline mild proximal LAD disease, if the surgeon gives lemur, lemurs could get occluded. And that's how, and though it, semantically it could be triple vessel disease, but if the LAD is not involved, there's no point sending these patients for surgery. And probably all these patients could be effectively managed by multivessel PCI. And how to tackle this and uh, how to get optimal results with imaging and uh, physiology guidance was very well demonstrated. The physiological guidance, another point which was stressed and shown very well was the drift patterns, how the uh, FFR values suddenly become normal once we come proximal to the lesion was also effectively shown. And uh, this final, uh, what we all aim to do is to do what is good to the patients and uh, what is uh, optimally to be done. So be it be right coronary artery CTO. Another point which we need to learn is uh, the most toughest lesion because CTO was opened first to stabilize the patient and later on went on to revascularization of LCX and then finally LED checking was done. With this, I think there were a lot of learning points uh, which were effectively demonstrated uh, by Dr. M.S. Hiramat sir uh, from Pune. Hope you all like this live case transmission and enjoy these live case learnings too. Thank you. Yours, Dr. A. Srinivas Kumar.